Hawaii, Kilauea volcano latest quakes and inflation we're going to see from the geodesy. Also, I'd like to inform you of what the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory monthly update says. U.S. Geological Survey, November 7. The activity summary, Kilauea volcano is not erupting. Monitoring data continued to show steady rates of seismicity and ground deformation. We're going to see the, how much it's quite it quickly um, blow, it's um, bulging. So, low rates of sulfur dioxide emissions and only minor geologic changes since the end of eruptive active activity of September of last year. Observations. Monitoring data show no significant changes in volcanic activity during September. Seismic stations detect over 1,600 earthquakes, which is an increase of about 12% from last month. Episodic increases in seismic seems to, uh, seismicity seem to have lost their timely periodicity, as the last swarm October 13 was followed by low rates of seismicity at the summit. Sulfur dioxide emission rates are low at the summit and are below detection limits at Puoo at the lower east rift zone. The water pond at the bottom of Halimaumau, which began forming July 25, 2019, continues to slowly expand and deepen, and you can see information on recent sample acquisition. Although not currently erupting, areas of persistently elevated ground temperatures, so we see there's bulging and elevated higher ground temperatures, and minor release of gases are still found in the vicinity of the 2018 Lower East Rift Zone fissures. So those fissures have uh, activity as well. These include steam, water, very small amounts of hydrogen sulfide, and carbon dioxide. These conditions are expected to be long-term. Similar conditions following the 1955 eruption continued for years to decades. Since early March of 2019, GPS stations and tilt meters at Kilauea summit have recorded deformation consistent with slow magma accumulation within the shallow portion of Kilauea summit magma station, which is one to two kilometers or approximately one mile below the surface of the ground. However, gas measurements have yet to indicate significant shallowing of magma. HVO continues to carefully monitor all data streams at the Kilauea summit for important changes. There was an inflationary event near Puoo that occurred during the end of September through the first week of October. Continuous stations near the cone, like OKIT, NPOC, KAMO, along with KALR, the campaign station experienced an acceleration of motion, consistent with source inflation on the rift between Puoo and Kupaianaha. Further east, GPS stations and tilt meters continue to show motions consistent with slowed refilling of the deep east rift zone magmatic reservoir in the broad region between Puo and Highway 130. Monitoring data do not suggest any imminent change in volcanic hazard of this area. In addition to the motion along east rift zone, the south flank of Kilauea continues to creep seaward. Okay, that's still going seaward. To, uh, at elevated rates after the May 4, 2018 magnitude 6.9 earthquake near Kalapana. HVO continues to carefully monitor all data streams along the Kilauea East Rift Zone and South Flank for important changes. A sample of water collected from the Halimama water lake by UA UAS on October 26 has undergone preliminary analysis. Early results indicate that the sample has a pH of 4.2, moderately acid in the range of many fruit juices, and high concentrations of dissolved sulfur and magnesium. This composition reflects complex processes including reaction between magmatic gases, groundwater that was recharged as precipitation, and Kilauea's basaltic rocks through which the groundwater flows towards the pond. The water's composition is significantly different from rainwater and is also significantly different from water present in the deep Keller Well, which is about a mile south of Halimama. The difference in the Keller Well water suggests that the release of magmatic gases is currently focused under the crater and ponded water, consistent with long-term observations at the summit. 
The results of the water sample analysis will assist HVO in evaluating potential eruptive hazards posed by Kilauea. For example, the high concentration of dissolved sulfate in the lake water, 53,000 mg per liter, that's 75% of the total dissolved solids, suggests that it originates from SO2 released by magma residing at shallow depths below Halimaumau. So the magma is shallow below the crater. Further work may help constrain that depth. If much of the SO2 emitted by a subsurface magma is being dissolved into the water, current measurements of SO2 emission rate for Kilauea summit are underestimates or for true SO2 release from the magma. In the absence of the summit water, SO2 emission rates would likely be higher, perhaps closer to 200 TD emitted prior to the 2008 appearance of the summit lava lake. Future changes in sulfate concentration of the water may indicate changes in SO2 degassing and magma depth. The lake is also variable in color and temperature. HVO's single sample of water may not be representative of the lake as a whole. Additional water samples may be necessary to best monitor all aspects of Kilauea's current non-eruptive state. Hazards? Hazards remain in the lower East Rift Zone eruption area at the Kilauea summit. Residents and visitors near the 2018 fissures, lava flows and summit collapse area should heed Hawaii County Civil Defense and National Park warnings. Lava flows and features created by the 2018 eruption are primarily on private property and persons are asked to be respectful and not enter or park on private property. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory continues to closely monitor geologic changes, seismicity deformation and gas emissions for any sign of increased activity in Kilauea. HVO maintains visual surveillance of the volcano with webcams and field visits. Additional messages and alert level changes will be issued as warranted by changing activity. Background, as of June 25, 2019, Kilauea volcano has been at normal green. Now, we noticed before in the previous video that uh, Bahala had the deep quakes. Usually, they're in the mantle plume. But here we are on the geodesy, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. And this is um, one of the areas at... Uh, okay, this is... Uh, which one is this? Anyway. All right, I, I didn't get the uh, reading on this one. NA12, position NA12 reference, okay. Okay, this is now east. This means, uh, let's go in, can we go closer? Okay, that's better. All right, yeah, if it were going up, it means it's going east. And it did so very rapidly after the 2018 eruption. And uh, it's now going west, much more of an incline than we had last, uh, the last period, as you can see here. And if it goes up, it means it's going north, if it goes down, it's going south. It quite, quite quickly went south after the eruption. And it's the uh, incline going back north. It seems to be a lot more incline than it was last time, as you can see. Okay. And is it inflating or deflating? Well, it deflated during the eruption last year. And it's inflating again, as you can see, much more bigger incline than we had previously, before the last year's eruption. So basically, it's right now going northeast, and it's really inflating rapidly. Okay, going back. I went far too far back. Sorry about that. Now we have to go back and find Hawaii. As you can see here, it has a lot of GPS stations. We're going into this area, the Big Island. I'm sorry about that. I'm wasting your time. Okay, let's go. Um, let's go. Let's go to Pahala. Pahala is here. They don't have any GPS, but we'll get the one that's closest to it. See what's happening. Oh, that's the one that we had before. No, it's not. I thought it was an A12, but. Okay, anyway, you'll see that we have east, basically level, 
and it's not inflating that much there. Let's go to um, East Rift Zone, H-O-L-E, to see what's happening there. Okay, that's going east, and it's going south, southeast, and a very steep incline. Okay, the one that we had here was going uh, northeast, this thing here is going southeast, and of course it's bulging. And from what they've told us, we have a 12% increase in earthquakes since last September, since September. So there is an increase in earthquakes. There's also bulging, and uh, they're also monitoring to find out what's going on. Um, and we see a tremendous rise. Let's go this one here, OKIT. Okay, a tremendous rise after last year's eruption. That's bulging. This is going north, and this is going east, northeast. So you see that it's going every which way. Northeast. Let's take another one. This is going north, east, very rapidly, and it's inflating. Northeast. Where are the ones that are going south? That's what I'd like to know. KTPM. Okay. It's going east since last year's eruption. Going southeast and inflating. This is the one that's going southeast. Okay, that's the one that's sloughing off southeast, as, as they said. But it's going every which way, as we can see, because it's bulging also. Let's go to Mauna Loa. Just one in Mauna Loa around the crater, see what's happening there. Okay, that's going east, northeast, and it's inflating. As we said, they have the same magma chamber. I'll leave links below for you for this. You can uh, find things yourself on the, at the uh, geodesy, the GPS stations on Hawaii and the West Coast and whichever location you'd like. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.